You're tuned into the COVID-19 Community Report here on KDRT 95.7 FM in Davis, California. I'm your host, Autumn Lebe Renault, and today is Friday, March 27th. We're sharing local news and resources, not focusing on what everyone else can read out there in the world, but really on what's impacting Davis and nearby cities in Yolo County during the COVID-19 pandemic. My call-in guests today are Yolo County Supervisor for District 2, Don Saylor, and Dr. Mary Ann Limbos, who is the Deputy Public Health Officer for Yolo County. And we'll have that first interview in just a few minutes. This show airs live at noon on Tuesdays and Fridays and repeats at 5 p.m. both days. You can also listen online at kdrt.org, and you'll find a compilation of resources there as well that we, com- we have compiled from all the shows we've done so far. Next Tuesday, I'll speak with Heidi Kellison of Downtown NorCal about local businesses and Jessica Hubbard of Yolo Community Foundation regarding the impact of the pandemic on nonprofit organizations. And on April 3rd, I'll interview Congressman John Garamendi. So here we are, folks, week two of Shelter in Place, and the United States hit an unwelcome milestone this week as it became the country with the most COVID-19 cases. And in Yolo County, as of this morning, the news is that there have been 13 confirmed cases and one death. I'll take a moment here to thank our medical professionals and our first responders, public servants, and all involved in our food supply train, from farmers and farm workers to transportation workers and grocery clerks, for their work out there while most of us are doing our best to adapt to social distancing. We appreciate you. As always, I'm going to share a few announcements before we get to our first call. So despite some welcome news this week that SEIU union representatives found two huge domestic face mask stores in, the, in this country, there are still massive shortages of masks for health care providers, first responders, and other essential workers. In response, grassroots groups devoted to sewing protective face masks are popping up everywhere. Sutter Davis Hospital wants us to know that they have a PPE donation line, and that stands for Personal Protective Equipment, and you can call that at 530-759-7477. They're accepting donations of N95 and surgical masks, any model, including homemade, isolation gowns, reusable face shields, goggles, latex-free gloves, disinfecting wipes, and more. So please call that number again. That's 530-759-7477 to schedule donations. Davis High School newspaper, The Hub, and community newspaper, The Davis Enterprise, collaborate on a weekly podcast. Their most recent episode looks at some of the ways healthcare operations are forced to be modified as COVID-19 continues to spread. A Davis orthodontist, pediatric physical therapist, and family physician each share their perspective. Find the podcast online at bluedevilhub.com. That's H-U-B. We all know businesses are taking hard hits right now. With all our local breweries, wine tasting rooms, and bar shutdowns, no surprise, sales of off-premise alcoholic beverages have soared. Earlier this week, the California Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control, known as ABC, issued a wide-ranging notice of regulatory relief, dramatically increasing the options for selling alcoholic beverages in the state. The notice expands options for delivery of beverages as well as uh, addresses the legality of selling alcoholic beverages to go. And you can learn more at abc.ca.gov. And thank you to Joe Denunzio of Davis Chamber of Commerce for that tip. And I'm particularly thinking here of Sudwork Brewing Company, Parkside Bar and Lounge, Woodstock's Pizza, and Blue Note Brewery, all of whom are strong supporters of KDRT. All right, please enjoy a little music while we get set up to talk to Supervisor Saylor. Something I've learned from years of producing local election coverage is just how many services are routed through our county-level government. With an annual budget of nearly $500 million, there's much that happens in Yolo County, including efforts to improve access to health care and address food insecurity, as well as voter registration, tax collection, and more. Here to give us some insight into the county and how it's managing during the pandemic is Yolo County Supervisor for District 2, Don Saylor. Thanks for joining us today. Autumn, thank you so much for this series. 
um, really it's a very important service to get the message out. Well, we are happy to do it. So I really want to do a little bit of a deep dive here with you in the 10 minutes we have. I know some county offices are closed. I know that like many of us, you're working remotely. Um, and also that on any given day, your office fields a lot of public in inquiries. So what are you hearing from your constituents right now? Well, Autumn, I think you're, I'm delighted you're going to have Marianne Limbos come on uh, later in the hour to, or in the, in the show to give an update on some of the health issues. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you that we just uh, added two more confirmed cases. Mm. So we now in Yolo County have 13 confirmed cases, and one of those has passed away, sadly. Mm. So what's happening with Yolo County is that the, we are 100% devoted to uh, an emergency operations center. Uh, that is, I, I think a lot of people don't know what that means. The emergency operations centers are activated when there's a, a disaster, emergency, fire, earthquake, flood, mm -hmm. or in this case, a public health emergency. So many of the county staff might be trained as a financial analyst or, or as a code enforcement officer or a child support uh, director. All those folks have re been repurposed, and then many of them are, many county employees are, are furloughed, but mm -hmm. many of them are, in, are engaged in the activities uh, that are otherwise uh, going on. So that's uh, so. What what's happening around the uh, around the counties? We're we're having uh, people have, uh, for, by and large, have accepted the public health order that was issued on March 18th mm -hmm. by our health officer Ron Chapman, and the health order is effective from March 19th to April 7th. And when you travel through our communities, you're seeing uh, empty streets that are that are typically pretty congested or at least busy. Most people are staying home. That's a really appropriate. We're getting questions uh, from folks about the interpretation of the order. And if any of the listeners are, are, want to follow that up, the yolocounty.org uh, website has a page devoted to a shelter in place 101. Right. And there's a, there's a survey online that you can access and, and kind of drill down and see uh, what's what's going on. But initially, we were having a lot of questions. Uh, what does this mean for my business? Or right. can I do this physical activity? Or can my children come and visit? And those kind of things. Th that's kind of tapered off as people have, have kind of buckled down to doing each of us doing our part to reduce the, the rate of infection. Right. And should we so, expect that the order will be extended past April 7th? I think it's I, it's undoubtedly going to be extended. Mm -hmm. We realize that, that uh, when we first stepped in, we needed to just get it in place. And as we're as this is all unfolding, we're continuing to see uh, cases rise. And of course, we all know that the United States is now with about eighty six thousand cases confirmed, is the leader in the in the in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, over twelve hundred people have died uh, in, in our country. So we're we're seeing this. Uh, going to continue. In California, it's doubling every three to four days, and we're over 3,000 now. Mm -hmm. So yes, I expect that it'll, it'll be extended. Some of the just amazing things that are happening, the food bank has picked up, the, has really picked up their, their efforts. Uh, they're with Rob Davis, former Davis mayor. He's, mm -hmm. he's doing an incredible job of coordinating the food bank's uh, COVID-19 efforts this they're doing three major new food distributions every week uh, this this week they've served 1536 households including 3600 family members wow. and they're not just doing that by going to a single location and, and waiting for people to line up because they've got to be very careful with the social distancing the mm -hmm. physical distance they're delivering food boxes to individual uh, households so that has kept 180 volunteers busy. Farm Fresh to You has even pitched in and done some driving in West Sacramento. There's just a lot of creative energies going in. And one of the things I wanted to be sure to say is that if people are, if the listeners want to know how to volunteer, well, one of the things they can do is, is sign on to the Yolo Food Bank's volunteer website. So that's yolofoodbank.org. 
that would be a really good place for you. To yeah, connect. I've been mentioning them on each show. They're really doing yeoman's work out there. And uh, Rob Davis, if you're listening, we've, we were in touch about this early on, but I'm planning to, to reach out to you to come on the show as well. So how does, Don, how does the county coordinate with the, the various cities in Yolo County during a, a time of emergency? Well, it's, it's a hand in glove, actually. There's, there's not, a, there's not a, a sliver of paper between the efforts of Yolo County and the four cities mm-hmm. uh, in the county. So they, the city managers are all involved with the county administrative officer ongoing communications between elected officials and at the and at the and on the ground level uh, the the an example here would be the city of davis police uh, chief is responsible for enforcing the public health order so the county health officer issues an order that's enforceable by law enforcement that means there's got to be a lot of coordination with law enforcement the, the four city police chiefs and mm-hmm. the sheriff are all in contact with the emergency operations center. And if you're in Davis and have a question, you know, some of the questions that are coming up now, Autumn, are things like, well, my employer uh, doesn't seem to agree that, that uh, since we're not an essential business, that I need to come in to work. And so what do I do about that? Mm-hmm. Or I see that across the street there's uh, some kind of an active gathering going on. Isn't that a violation? Uh, or I just am curious about how I, I'm puzzled with how I can get my medication or something yeah. like that. So you, there's a, another website inside the city of Davis, policeweb at cityofdavis.org. That's policeweb at cityofdavis.org. Mm-hmm. That people can send in a, a question or a comment uh, or a concern and then get a direct response. So that's the direct involvement. Another another activity that's that's underway that is... I think very exciting and, and necessary is something that the Board of Supervisors approved uh, on our, our March 24th meeting, the creation of a YOLO Community Benefit Fund. And this, will, this is in the works, but it, it's a, the, the, this is a, co- a collaboration among the, the YOLO Community Foundation, uh, Yocha Dehi Tribe, uh, several of the larger health systems. Mm-hmm. And the four cities and the chambers of commerce, and the idea, and the county, and the county dedicated two hundred and fifty thousand dollars as a seed money. So the cities are each uh, participating in the steering committee discussions to create this benefit fund that will be dedicated toward stabilizing the nonprofits that are, that are struggling, as, as businesses are as well. So there are other needs as well. But this uh, this is another area that the cities and the county and nonprofits and the, and the uh, business community are working together on. Yeah, and I was very excited to hear that news, obviously running a nonprofit here. And I'm, I'm very uh, in, engaged with other nonprofit leaders in the community. And just last week, before the supervisors met, we were having a conversation online that we're hearing about a lot of support for businesses and support for this and that. And the one thread that wasn't coming through was nonprofits. And yet, Many of us who shore up, you know, many social services, many basic needs in the community um, may not make it through this without without some assistance. So uh, thanks to the Board of Supervisors for that action. And I'm really looking forward to being involved and, and seeing how that plays out. Before we run out of time here, Don, because we're almost there, uh, how can people reach you? And, and what's one takeaway you'd like to leave us with? Well, I, I really encourage folks to, to check out the county's website, uh, yolocounty.org. Mm-hmm. To reach me is very simple. It's Don Saylor at yolocounty.org. Uh, or you can, uh, you can uh, reach me on Facebook, on my personal Facebook page. I'm, there's a lot of activity going on uh, with the COVID-19 YOLO Community Response Facebook group. Indeed. And I encourage people to, to uh, access that because they've done a really good job of curating issues. Well, one thing I want to so, show, say, mention to folks is that you, you got your census forms in the mail in the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. This is a good opportunity. You're sitting home doing nothing, looking for what to, get, what to keep yourself busy at. <laughs> So fill out your census form and make sure you send that in. And the other thing is there's a the suicide – just one last point, Autumn. The suicide prevention for Yolo County 
uh, typically has about 500 uh, or 600 calls in a given month. In March, they're going to they're they're running on a on a pace to get 900 calls. Wow. That's just an indication of some of the concerns that individuals are having. So we are at a time now we need to be patient and calm with each other and with ourselves. The Yolo County uh, Health and Human Service Director Karen Larson has done a public service announcement that that folks can access at the, on the Yolo County Facebook page that gives some tips and tidbits on how to keep your own mental health at a good, even pace uh, during this challenging time. So be kind to each other and yourself and keep in touch, and uh, we'll, we'll make it through this together, uh, and uh, it'll be uh, soon it'll be history. All right. That's a great note to end on. Thank you so much for making time for us today. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Take Bob. care. Bye-bye. All right. I, uh, I actually watched that... Uh, PSA from Dr. Larson this morning, and we'll bring that forward on DMA's social media so it can get a little bit more traction. All right, let's uh, share just a couple more resources before we take our next call. We've been talking about county government, and this week the Davis City Council voted unanimously at its March 24th meeting to adopt an urgency ordinance which states that residential and commercial landlords cannot evict renters impacted by COVID-19 during a local emergency period. This is consistent with information from the county and the state, but in addition, the council voted to approve a resolution suspending water shutoffs for residential and commercial customers. And if you've been reading the news about the continued situation in Detroit, there are people left without water for hand washing during this time, and no one wants to see that happen here. So... Um, and the, they'll also waive late fees through the end of May of this year. And the city also uh, asked me to direct people to these additional resources. They're on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash City of Davis. They also have a page at their website, cityofdavis.org slash coronavirus. That's devoted to all of their resources. And you can sign up to receive emergency notifications at yolo alert. Dot org, yolo-alert.org. All right. Uh, the Davis Night Market, I talked about them recently, but they've changed their hours. They provide free food for people suffering from food insecurity and hunger, and they're even, even mapping locations of those in need. The Night Market is open Tuesdays and Thursdays now from 8.30 to 10.30 p.m., uh, in Central Park. If you need food, please head on down. Just be sure uh, to observe social distancing guidelines. And once again, Yolo County Jury Services has announced all jury panels have been canceled through April 30th. So if you were scheduled for jury during that, during that time, you are off the hook. You don't need to do anything. You may be called at a later date. In fact, I think you can probably count on that as they deal with their backlog. And I'm, I'm, I'm in that group. All right. Uh, the Davis Joint Unified School District continues to make breakfast and lunch service available to children under the age of 18 Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the following school sites. Uh, Mon Marguerite Montgomery Elementary, which is on Danbury Street, Harper Junior High on East Covell Boulevard, Davis Senior High on West 14th, and Patwin Elementary on Shasta Drive. Meal packages in include lunch for the current day and breakfast for the night for the next morning. And you can learn more about that at djusd.net. And if you've lost income due to COVID-19 or shelter in place, you may be eligible for paid sick leave, family leave, or unemployment insurance. Find out more from the California Labor and Workforce Development Agency's website, labor.ca.gov. All right, we'll take just a brief break as we get ready for our next caller. As Supervisor Saylor mentioned, uh, I want to keep steering uh, listeners to the Yolo Public Health COVID-19 resources, which you'll find spotlighted at yolocounty.org. And with us today is Dr. Mary Ann Limbos, who serves as the Deputy Public Health Officer. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Autumn. Well, there's a lot of messaging and directive that comes from the state and federal governments, although perhaps not as much as we'd like to see from the CDC at present. Can you help us understand public health's role at the county during this time? Well, we are trying to provide a consistent message. And like you say, a lot of there, there's a lot of 
different information um, coming from the federal government and the state. And as much as possible, we try to distill that information into um, ways that are useful for our community. Mm -hmm. And um, we try as much as possible to keep that our community updated. Um, we uh, host a, um, a weekly call with community partners to provide them the latest information on what is going on with um, locally as well as nationally. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you um, spoke with um, Supervisor Saylor about um, our Yolo County website, which we update um, daily. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are a lot of sources of information. Um, we try you know, through different media to tr reach as many people in our community as possible. And we really rely on um, our community partners um, and uh, TV and radio um, uh, programs such as yourself to um, try to reach those um, folks that we might not be reaching perhaps with our, our website. Great. And we're, we're more than happy to, to help out with that. Um, this morning, th I, I read that the county announced it would begin allowing home delivery on non-essential services in an effort to help boost the local economy. Correct. I'm hoping you can um, give us more information about that. And, and what kinds of businesses are we talking about? Well, you know, we, um, we realize that this, is, um, this, is, this can be a really difficult time for um, our local businesses, and it, it's, it's going to be a struggle for some of the smaller ones. So um, many of them don't um, fall under the category of um, essential businesses, mm -hmm. but we'd like to support them um, as much as possible and at the same time um, try to keep our residents from going out as much as possible and Certainly. really trying to encourage mm -hmm. them to stay home. Um, and so the, um, the, the way we were hoping to accomplish both of these goals is to still allow um, our non-essential local businesses um, to um, continue to provide some of their services to the community by delivery, mm -hmm. um, but still keeping their storefronts closed. So in that way, you know, we're not, we're not um, having our residents go out. They're still staying home but then our businesses can still provide at least some, some level of service. So would that include things? I'm, I'm trying to get an idea of what sorts of so businesses. So, for example, like one, one of the, um, the, the businesses that was, um, that was asking was, you know, for example, florists. Can um, florists um, stay open? Mm -hmm. Well, they're not uh, an essential business. But, um, you know, they, they can still deliver, so a, um, a, mem a member of the community can't go into a florist right. to, um, to buy their um, flowers or products, but um, they can still call, and the, the florist can still make that delivery to the home. Great. I'm sure that's really welcome news out there for a lot of business owners. Um, and before we run out of time, the question I'm hearing most frequently is when will testing be more widely available? So what, what can you tell us about that? Sure. Um, you know, over the past couple of weeks, um, we've gotten some commercial labs up and running. So our testing capacity has increased over the past couple of weeks. Um, and because of that, our case counts will continue to go up. And, you know, we, we've, we've heard, that, um, we're hearing that um, people want more testing, but what the message we want to get across is we want our testing to make sense. Hmm. And what I mean by that is, you know, when COVID-19 is in a community, it's good to have this wide pre widespread testing so we can isolate our cases and keep them from spreading disease to the rest of um, the community, but we're not there anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, we know COVID-19 is uh, is in our community and it doesn't make sense to test um, uh, people with mild symptoms um, and fever because we would give them the same recommendation whether we know that they're COVID-19 possible or mm -hmm. whether we don't know that and that would be to stay home and self-isolate and we and honestly we would have the same we have the same recommendations for people who are asymptomatic uh, asymptomatic and that recommendation is still to stay home. Right. 
and wash your hands. Wash your hands, absolutely. <laughs> Good. All right. Um, I just want to remind people again that you can visit yolocounty.org, and right on the front page, there's a big spotlight with all of the county's resources. And Dr. Limbos, thank you for joining us, and please pass along thanks to um, Dr. Ron Chapman, too, because before we were isolated, he came in here and did some important programming on this. Oh, I certainly will. I'll pass that on to our team. Thank you so much for helping us get the message out. All right. Appreciate your time. Thanks. Bye-bye. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's actually a pleasure to talk to people who are really boots on the ground and making things happen here in the community. And I want to thank everyone who's tuning in. I'm I'm getting uh, some nice comments and, and feedback on social media, and putting together a local radio show on the COVID-19 crisis was really the most expedient way that we here at Davis Media Access and KDRT could make locally relevant content available. Again, I'm, I'm not getting into politics here, and I'm not covering the news that the national news outlets are sharing. I'm really trying to focus on how this impacts our community and, and what our local resources are. So our staff here at Davis Media Access is hard at work developing options to bring some fresh new local radio and TV programming to our community soon. Some of them will be interactive, all with remote capability. I'll share more soon, and I'll continue connecting with community groups and nonprofits. Um, I'll be back next Tuesday. And from the KDRT studio, I'm Autumn Labbe-Renault, and this has been the COVID-19 Community Report.